All right, you're all set and ready to go to make your first game or cutscene or animation or whatever, and you realize you're going to have to bring in a lot of props, make a lot of assets for your game to create the environment that you want. Well, the good news is there's a lot of places where you can do that for free. You don't need to spend weeks and weeks modeling things from scratch, although you can bring in original stuff. It's actually pretty easy to do, and I'll show you how to do that at the end of the video. But I'm going to show you how to bring in things for the marketplace from Sketchfab, from Polycam, from Blender, and Blender's Blender Kit, and then how to bring in original content from Blender or pretty much any other kind of 3D modeling application. First thing I think we should talk about, though, is here I am in my Unreal scene, and I've got my old Unreal Engine 4 Manny Mannequin over here, and you can notice that this little chest of drawers that are brought in from Blender is scaled properly. But I found this really terrific table and chairs from Sketchfab, brought those in, and they're huge. So if you're going to start mixing and matching props from different kinds of places, then you're probably going to want to give yourself some kind of scale rule or some kind of you know human scale. And you can just take a cube and make it six foot tall or whatever, that's fine. But let me show you how to add in the mannequins, even if you didn't add them at the beginning. So if we come down here to our content browser, I'll just make that a little bit bigger, we're going to find the Add button this time, not in we're going to click on the add button and we're going to come up and say add feature or content pack. So when I click on that you can see here are all of the content pack, the starting levels that you can use. Also there's your start of content over here but we're going to just click on the third person and add that to the project and that will give us all the mannequins plus all of the blueprint code uh, for that. So if you started off with a blank scene and then you're regretting it like oh gosh I wish I'd, I'd added that in at the beginning. Well you can always do it later on. So once you have that in your scene um, you're going to open up the content folder and you're going to find the characters folder. Here's the characters folder, and there's two sets of characters. There's the Unreal 4. I kind of, you know, I kind of missed the old uh, Unreal 4 Manny, Manny the Mannequin. There he is there. But if you prefer the new ones, you can uh, go back to the other folder at the top there, this Mannequins folder under meshes, and here's all of the current Unreal 5 Mannequins. So you can bring in the, the new Manny or, or the Quinn uh, skeleton in here and just drop them in and now you've got a, a scale ruler for your furniture, your props or whatever. So I definitely recommend doing that. One of the places though to start looking for actual content is the marketplace. So every time you open up Unreal to launch the editor, you've got the tab at the top there for the marketplace. And I really recommend that you check this out a lot. Uh, if you come at the beginning of every month, there's always some that are free for the month. And the nice thing about this is you just, just like buy them. I mean, you're buying them, but they're free. So you're just kind of adding them to your shopping cart. So like, here's one that I didn't get this coral pack. I can click on that add to cart and then you just go up to the cart and you say, please buy the, these things and they're, they're free. You do have to log in with your Epic account, but then you just download them. And the nice thing about that is that then they show up in your library tab over here. So here's your open projects. But if I scroll down, you've got your vault and you can see I've been doing this for years now. I've been adding in free content or I've just found things that are useful to me from the permanently free collections. And I've just added these in here. So if at some point I want to add the Infinity Blade props or whatever, I can just click add to project and I can add that to the current project that I have open. One of the problems with this though is that there's a lot of things down over here. There's a lot to, to add. Uh, so what I tend to do is I've got these little folders up at the top here, these projects that I've made specifically for like sort of shopping lists. I'll add the whole asset pack from some, you know, dungeons, assets or city, medieval town, whatever. And I only want two or three things in there. I don't want to add that whole thing to my currently open file. So what I'll just do is use this kind of like transfer station here where I'll add a whole bunch of things and then I'll go shopping here and just uh, migrate. I'll show you how to do that next. But I do want to go right back to the marketplace really quickly and just draw your attention to this little tab here, free tab. This is where all this permanently free stuff is, free for the month, all these kinds of things, all the mega scan stuff that you can get through the mega scans bridge engine as well, are, as well are here. But you can just kind of go through here and say like, oh, okay, city of brass props. That looks really cool. So I can like click on that and download it and add that. And these stay here forever. So it's not like you have to worry about the end of the month coming along at the Infinity Blade Castle. These are all old games that they don't support anymore and that they've just made all the assets free on here. A lot of times these are pretty low poly. They're older, so you can get a lot of like really low poly stuff that is great for a smaller game that maybe you're, you don't want to be choking on a really heavy mesh. Um, so there's that. So I'm going to go back over here to my library and just show you. I have this asset transfer open over here on a different tab. If I click on that, you can see like, oh, okay, Okay, here is just a, a document that there's nothing in it but a whole bunch of stuff that are all kind of similar. They're just different kinds of rocks and you know dungeon things or whatever. So let's decide I want to add this little brazier here to my level, my current level that I have open. So I've just selected it. And remember, if you don't have it open already in the content browser like I do, that's Control B. Control B is going to take you right to that in the folder or select it and click on this little button over here, the folder with the magnifying glass on it. Either one of those will take you right to where the asset is. 
is. So if I want to add this prop to my current scene that I'm working on, what I want to do is come down onto this and right click on it and then select asset actions. And what we want is not export, that's if I wanted to take it into some other outside tool and work on it a little bit. What I want to do is migrate it. So I'm just going to click on that migrate tab and you're going to get this, which is basically, oh, here's the asset and everything that is, oh, it's asking me us to save it. You might have to save the selected. Sure, I'll save it. Here's all the stuff that it's going to say. We're going to send all of these things. And the reason why doing it this way is the smart way is because maybe this brazier has some fire in it. It has some smoke, some particle systems. It's got some animation to it. It's got all kinds of things that are associated with making making the asset look terrific in the scene, including all of the textures and materials and things. So when you say okay to this, what you're basically saying is, I wanna put all of that stuff, Do please, every, anything that this prop needs, please send it to my other folder. And then I'm gonna find, so on my Unreal projects, I'm gonna find my project five that we've been working on, here it is, and you wanna find the content folder. And you just wanna select the content folder. And when you say select folder over here, it will migrate it. And I've already done it, so it's it's gonna give me an error message if I click on this, but that, that's the last step, click on that, and then it thinks for a second and then it gives you a little pop-up that says um, uh, migration successful. But before we leave, let's take a look at where this prop actually is in my current document. So it's in a folder called static mesh uh, and it's small prop. So I don't know if this is probably something I made when I made this document, whatever, but static mesh small prop, let's remember that. Now, when we switch back over to the original project we were working on, we want to look for, in our content browser, that same folder. So there is static mesh. So if I pop that open, small props, and sure enough, inside there is my little torch. And I can just drag and drop that into the scene, and it's migrated perfectly. So let's jump over here and take a look at Sketchfab right now. That's one of many places. It's one of my favorite places to go and find things. But it's uh, it's just one of other. There's Turbo Squid. There's all kinds of places. Now, Sketchfab, like any place, will have models that are for sale. And I don't expect you to buy anything. But but you might say it in the future, like, oh, okay, I love the sci-fi table. That's exactly what I'm looking for. It's $12. Like, that, it's worth my time, whatever. I'll just go ahead and use that. Don't do that for class. But you certainly can do that in the future. However, you do need to come over and check the downloadable. I always select that on here because kind of like ArtStation or whatever, a lot of people will upload things to Sketchfab. They're just showing off or they're using it as a kind of a portfolio to get some work. And then you find the exact perfect thing that you're looking for and you click on it and oh it's not downloadable so I've just typed in table in here there's a lot of different kinds of collections so I found one that worked pretty good here where did it go this roll top desk over here so a lot of these will be when you click on them you'll see that okay it's actually somebody selling this but this one is free a lot of them are free and this one is downloadable because we checked on that. So if I scroll down here a little bit, you'll see that I can download this, this 3D model. Thank you, Redhorn. And when I click on this, we get some good news because we are actually looking for the FBX file format. That's the easiest thing to open up directly into Unreal. Now, eventually, I think actually this universal scene description, the USD file format that they're working on is going to replace a lot of this stuff. It's trying to like, it's like one file format to rule them all. But for now, FBX is the best way to get things into Unreal. However, if it's not there a lot of times you'll find a free downloadable model and you can't find the FBX well something you can do if you have some experience with blender make sure you've turned on the importer in the blender uh, add-ons to add the GLTF uh, file format or whatever as much there'll be other ones that you can download those and then open those into a uh, blender and then just export them right out of blender again as an FBX that's a way to kind of use blender as a translator a bridge or uh, to get things in that that are not there but in this case we could just download these uh, go to our download folder. Now inside my downloads folder, I'm just going to right click on this thing. I'm going to say extract all, and then it's going to think for a second, and I'm going to click off my other screen there. And this is what you're going to get. You're going to get the source folder over here that's got the table, and this is where the actual like 3D model is, but it does not necessarily have the textures on it. Sometimes these import right, and sometimes they don't, but the nice thing is that the textures are here. You're just going to have to bring these in. So you've got ambient inclusion, you've got the base color, you've got the normal, and then you've got the roughness map. So if you've watched the videos on how to plug these in, you can just add these into your uh, prime material and just swap these out and apply an instance of that to your desk or you can just make a, a unique material just for these objects here but it's pretty easy to do and then if we let's go ahead and I guess we'll just go ahead and do the whole process here if I go back to Unreal we're going to go ahead and say import in this case here and then we're going to go over here to the downloads folder find the table that we just had and we're going to go to the source folder and then it's going to select it and say open and then pretty much all of these you want to leave alone here unless you are bringing a character that has a skeletal mesh or whatever. You can make sure that you have a lot of these alone. This is going to say create a new material and we're just going to go ahead and do that and import all. And then it's going to add those to the asset, so to, the, to our project. So, oh, there's another scale issue there, obviously. So we're definitely going to want to uh, 
take that and scale that guy up into a size that looks a little bit more reasonable for what we're what we want to deal with. But now let's take a look at the materials on here. So I'm just going to go and find that folder. I'm just going to bring back in that folder, open up the textures folder, and I'll just grab all three of these. And I'm just going to drag and drop them into the content browser. And I'm going to be lazy with where I put them. Eventually, I'll go back in here and, and do all the right things. So let's pop open the material. And it's on my other monitor as well. Open that up here. And again, you can reach the content browser from here to search for that. And here they are. I'm going to go and grab these guys. Just drag and drop them right into the scene. Oh, come back, you two normal map and the, um, the roughness map. So I'm just going to delete this parameter for the, the texture sample. I'm going to plug the base color in. I'm going to plug in the normal map in down over here. Whoops, where'd it go? Plug in the normal, plug in the, oh, that's ambient occlusion. And then we will plug in the roughness in there. And then there we go. And then we can apply that material. And then, oh, I might have got the roughness and the ambient occlusion backwards. We'll see. Um, and then if I go back to, I'll just close this material out. And you can see it's already, it, remember the UV coordinates. It's got it on there, right? So yeah, it looks pretty good with, with that. So you may just have to actually like rebuild the material if it doesn't import in right. But that's again, you know, it's free. You got a nice little roll top desk for your scene now who can complain. Let me show you another one that I like to use a lot, which is Polycam. If I go over here to Polycam, this is something that you can do with your phone. So download this app. You have a bunch of free scans you can do. Eventually you have to pay for it. It isn't a subscription, but I've been uploading so much stuff and people will, if people download your stuff, then you get more scans for free. I've been using it for over a year now and I haven't paid for anything yet. Um, but when I go on vacation or wherever, I take my phone with me and I just go out and I scan all these little assets. These are various things that I've done in various places. So I can also have my albums here, which include things that I've scanned, but also things that other people have scanned. The one drawback with Polycam is that when you go into the Explore tab, things are not necessarily labeled great. You know, like, oh, that's a good, that's a good, you know, three person. You need a three person to stand your scene. It's like, okay, well, that's great. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to download that right now and add that to my props folder here because that's a pretty good scan of a person standing there. And I can just import that in, into my scene. You do have to export it from uh, Polycam. You got to download it, but then you can import it right back into uh, Unreal. That's actually what I've done with this little character, this Egyptian Hatshepsut. This is a little statue that I scanned in the British Museum a little while ago. I took it into Blender, tidied it up a little bit, you know, kind of filled any holes and reduced the poly count that size down a little bit. But this is just, again, an asset that I scanned myself with my phone. And you'll also notice, too, that you don't have to have, have just things that are like props or people. If I go back to my albums, a lot of my... Uh, yeah, my natural folder here. I've got trees, I've got rocks, I've got roots, I've got, you know, piles of sand, whatever. This is a great place for, oh, I just need a little bit of like stone, something or another in the background of my scene and I don't want to spend a bunch of time making little stones. Well, there you go. Just download this, drop it in there, add your foreground assets or whatever. You know, they, they tend to be pretty good. It's another great source of, of ways to get free things. The only drawback, as I was starting to say, is that it's hard to search for things on polycam. Uh, you have to poke around a lot and then save things that are great when you find them. The last thing I want to take, show you too in terms of getting free stuff is the Blender Kit. Now Blender Kit you need to download separately. It used to be part of Blender. You would just turn on the asset pack. You have to go to the actual Blender Kit website and download it. That's this little ribbon that's across the top of my screen and if I wake it up by clicking on that little eyeball then this is just like the things that are you know they're just sort of featuring at the moment recent uploads or whatever for various things. Now I have access to everything because I do pay the monthly subscription. It's it's like six bucks a month or something like that. And I can get all the materials, all the models, all the scenes and whatever. You can get the materials. I recommend that you, you get Blender Kit if you use Blender, of course, because all of the materials are free. So you can get, oh great, old concrete tiles. And you literally just click and drag, just drag and drop onto uh, your scene and you can download these assets. And there's just hundreds of them. And it does actually does have a pretty good search engine. So if you look for a table in this engine here, again, we're in the, um, the materials tab here. I need to switch back over to the models tab. Well, that's actually scenes. We want this first one in here. Oh, and I lost the look for table in there. And you're going to find a lot. There's a lot of these things tend to be kind of like modern stuff, kind of like Ikea looking things, but you're like, well, that's kind of cute. And your little pedestal table, you literally just click and drag and you drop it right into your blender scene. It takes a second to download. Usually it does fine with the, the, the materials. You do need to be careful though, if you are sending this out to Unreal, that the materials, just us grab the shading tab for this. If I grab this material, I'll see pedestal table material, like, okay, yeah, this is good. So let me maximize this. 
window here. This is fine. So this will export into Unreal without any difficulty. So the mapping, it understands what that is. It doesn't worry about the normal map. It's going to bring these three texture samples, texture images in, and they'll be wired up probably uh, correctly. Sometimes the roughness map gets plugged into the metallic. You got to go in and if it looks a little weird, just go in and Unreal and you may need to move a few pins around, but this should uh, open without any difficulty at all. Where you will run into problems with taking things from Blender is if there's a bunch of procedural materials. If the wood on the tabletop is not created by an image sample, but by actual procedural materials and there's a bunch of math, that's not going to import. Now you can recreate almost everything in Unreal that you can do in Blender in terms of procedural materials, but you'll, you'll have to replace that. However, the good news is that you don't necessarily even need to do that. So like this wasn't a procedurally generated wooden tabletop. It's got its own sort of UV coordinates on there and it's going to incorporate that part of the mesh will, will be material 01 or whatever. And you can just swap it out with whatever you want. If it doesn't import the blender or procedural material, we'll just find a wood that you like inside of Unreal and just use that instead and it'll be fine. So that's a great way to, to bring things in from the blender kit. Although the limited, you're fairly limited in the amount of models that you can bring in unless you are using the subscription, but, uh, but there's still some. Um, the last thing I want to show you here is how to bring in something yourself from Blender, and that is this little column that I've made. You do need to make sure that you have UV unwrapped it. You can go in and say, just I'm gonna hit the tab key. I've actually made some seams in here and done it right, but you can just select all. And if you don't want to spend time doing the unwrapping, you can just hit that U key, smart UV project, and you'll get similar results. It just, it just has to have a, uh, a UV map to import. Otherwise, it'll just import the, the bare mesh. So because I've just applied this cracked concrete material on here, this is gonna export into Unreal with no difficulty at all. So so I'm going to select the object that I want to send out over here. You do want to make sure that you know where your origin point is, that it's where you expect it to be. Remember, you can change that origin point by going up to the options on here and select the, or, or the origins. I might just drop it so that it's right down on the, on the ground over there. That's a little bit better. Um, or you can go into the edit mode and move things around that way as well. So lots of different ways to move the origin point. And if you forget, there's now ways in Unreal that you can uh, move the origin point around in the, uh, the 3D modeling section. That's nice. You don't have to go back to your original third party uh, tool. I've got it selected and I've got other stuff in the scene. My table, my person, the camera, a light. Uh, I think it's actually a, that chest of drawers is underneath there. That's the drawers that I brought from Blender Kit. But I've got it right in the center of my scene. I have it selected and I'm going to go over here to File and I'm going to Export. And you may need to turn on the FBX Import Export in the add-ons. That's an easy thing to do, but I'm going to click on FBX on here. And then the way you're going to want to do this is just save this to your desktop or wherever, whatever folder you're working on. We'll just call this a uh, column. And then go over here and check on that you make sure that you have it limited to the selected objects. So if you've got that checked on here, then the thing that you want to send over will be exported and not my little person and the table and the, the light and the camera and all that kind of stuff. So selected objects. And then if you scroll down over here, it's not entirely important that you do this, but under the geometry tab, if you pop that open over here and switch this from uh, normals only to face, it's actually remembered from the last time I exported something. If you do that, and sometimes tangent space, this might give you an error on here. Um, the errors that you're going to get from this are not deal breakers, but you'll have a bunch of errors importing things into Unreal if you don't take these steps over here. You can also turn off the animation. That's on by default. You can deselect that if you don't have any animation with this, as we don't. So then I'm going to go ahead and export the FBX. I'm going to jump back over here into my scene in Unreal. And this time I'm going to click on the import button because I'm importing a new thing. I'm going to go to my desktop over here. I'm going to find my col column. There it is. And same kind of imports that I had before. Sean from the future interrupting with one last bit of information for you. If you're bringing something in that was made for Blender, something from the Blender kit or something that a material that you've applied from Blender, open up the material tab on the FBX importer in Unreal, open up the advanced tab and just check this invert normal maps. And that'll turn the OpenGL normal maps into direct X normal maps. And you won't even need to go into the texture. If you're not sure you bring something in from a, a different party and it looks like the normal map is inside out well you know how to do that double click on the normal map search for green and then check that invert green channel import all and then it's going to just think for a second here's my column 
and it's actually brought in the materials. You know, and the nice thing about this is when you're exporting stuff directly uh, from Blender like this, that you know everything's all ready to go. You don't have to spend any time messing with the uh, repairing the textures. But again, if you change your mind and say like, well, okay, this this one looked fine in Blender, but now that I'm over here in Unreal, actually there's a different material that I want to put on here. Well, that's just, that's easy. You just swap it out. You just change it down over here. I could literally just grab. Another one is, well, here, uh, clay bricks over there. Well, the, the scale is off a little bit for that, but you know you can swap out a texture quite easily in Unreal. You can even do a whole bunch of modeling in Blender and not worry about doing the textures and just bring in bare static mesh and then do the, your painting, do your, your texture applications here inside of Unreal. So all of those things are fairly easy for you to do. Hopefully that'll give you a whole lot of options for bringing in exciting things into your projects.